Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks for being back, and thanks for being here with me. I appreciate it. Uh, let's see, where did we leave off? We were working on Hostile Takeover. We had just... Let's go after the uh, Crocolisks. It's in the same area. That's what we'll do first. At some point, maybe we will make our way over to Kalimdor and head to Desolus. Yeah, we're in Northrend. Um, you know, we were doing some stuff in Borean Tundra. And Borean Tundra was definitely living up to its name.
it was a drag. Yeah. <laughs> are we are we carrying the joke forward? Are we allowed to carry the joke forward from one version of the game to the other? Is that even allowed? I'm not sure that it is. Yeah, but yeah, I, I blame I blame that mob. Yeah, I blame that mob for making the whole the whole time a boring time. I don't know. I just wasn't feeling it, <laughs> to be honest. Like, oh, why'd the stream end? I don't know. The stream ended earlier because I wasn't feeling it. And, and so now we're doing something else. That's that's really all. I, I don't have anything more concrete. Other than I really wasn't feeling it. Howling Fjord is a little more interesting. I wonder if any of it will be, but <laughs> but we'll see. Um, if, if I continue to be super bored, I might just level it on my own. Like in the evenings when my wife plays, like I might just level it on my own, and then I can, uh, then we can stream some dungeons and stream some raids and stuff. Cause like I, I don't know, I don't know if it's gonna get. Maybe I'll, I'll try Howling Fjord. I will say that we'll go to Howling Fjord tomorrow, and uh, and we'll see if it's any better. I kind of have a feeling it's all gonna be kind of super boring. I don't know why that suddenly changed, <laughs> but that's just kind of the vibe I got. So we'll see. Uh, but if I if I get super bored with it from like a streaming perspective, like if I don't if I'm not having fun streaming the leveling, I will just level it on my own. It's only like a handful more levels to get the max level, and uh, yeah, and then we'll do some dungeons and we'll raid on stream, and that'll be a lot more exciting. Once I can once we can queue up for like five mans and heroics and heroic plus and stuff like that, it'll be a lot more exciting than leveling up in Northrend. Because, uh, except for like a couple of zones, I feel like leveling up in Northrend is probably going to be pretty boring. So, we'll see. At least at least in, in hardcore when you are like kind of getting bored, you have like the edge of danger to keep you like into it. Y you have another factor to when I <laughs> It was like when I died and I realized I was not even looking at my HP like at all. I was like, "Oh, I am completely detached from everything I am doing in the game. It is time to go play a different game. That was what it was. When I just like suddenly died, <laughs> I, I wasn't like, I wasn't even paying attention to anything. And I was like, oh, that's, that's probably not a good way to play. And if it's not fun for me, I doubt the stream is fun for any of you guys. You know, if, if I'm not having fun, I, I really doubt that it's going to be like super fun for anybody at that point. If it ever is, it's not going to be then. Uh, these panthers, I feel like they're probably still a little bit too high of a level. Honestly. But then but then again, they're kind of in the same area that I want to be. So, we'll see. But yeah. Yeah, we, we have hardcore characters that need a little bit of attention. We also have, like, everybody's... You know, we're, we're maxed out, unrested. The warrior's maxed out. And, uh, and that's, that's something. Maybe we'll have to hit up the warrior tomorrow. Burn off some of that rested. Let's check the river here for Crocolisk. Ooh, we got some, uh, big boy gorillas in the way. Patrick Al Altaholic, this one. Yeah, it it's super useful. It could probably do a lot of things. I'm, I'm only using it to see the rest at XP. I'm, I'm glad that it still lists my rogue, even though the rogue is dead. I, ha I haven't deleted it yet. I, I probably... Oh wait, does the rogue have my name? The rogue does have my name. That's why I didn't delete the rogue. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to delete the rogue till I'm ready to make another character with that name, so... Justin, I appreciate that, man. I, I thought also that, like, not having seen the zones in a while... Um, ooh, I need to heal. ...would make me, like, super into it, but I really, like, I just wasn't feeling it today. We'll try Howling Fjord next time. And, and maybe I'll be into that a little bit more. Because, yeah, I also thought that, like, seeing Northrend again, like, after a while of not really leveling through, I thought, yeah, that'll be, like, unique. And I was like, eh. Could have just been the Borean Tundra. It does have a bad reputation for being, well, boring. 
In my past, I, I thought I used to like it, but maybe I never liked it. Maybe I never liked it. I'm not, I'm not digging what's going on here. I am not digging this combat at all. This is, uh, this is not, this is not doing it for me. This is not doing it for me. We, we gotta go to Kalimdor. I, I gotta get, I gotta get us out to Desolus. We've got like level 32 centaurs we could be grinding on safely instead of almost getting killed in the jungle to a random gorilla. Like I'm not, I'm not looking to have that kind of day. So let's get ourselves on the boat. Yeah, we, we need to we need to do a hard pivot. Uh, are we at the Highlands level thirty six? Oh, th this this could be good also. Syndicate footpads. We'll keep an eye on that one. Oh, the boat the boat is here. Am I gonna make the boat? It's questionable. We're gonna try our damnedest to make the boat. Come on. <laughs> You can do it! You can run as fast as anybody! Alright, we got it. Hold the boat! <laughs> Ahoy the boat! Is that what you say to a boat? Ahoy? I'm pretty sure that's proper. We barely made it. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna run from Ratchet to Stone Talon. Uh, you know, I could fly to Astronar. Maybe we should fly to Astronar from Ratchet. Is that is that gonna be better? Yeah, I think I think so. We have a passageway right here. We can go right through this passageway. Yeah, I think we'll fly to Astronar. I'm I'm hoping this lets us out like somewhere over here. No, it must not. It lets us out over here? Oh, that's so weird. Oh, then I have to come all the way over here. Why isn't there a pathway that just gets us back here into the Alliance camp? You, you'd think that would make too much sense. Huh. Oh, one other thing for anybody who cares, I, I've started to uh, I've started to clear the guild out a bit. So uh, ten days or more, if you haven't played a character in ten days or more, I booted it from the guild. If you pick that character back up, you want to start playing it again, just reach out to somebody for an invite. Uh, a lot of people are taking a hardcore break. It seems probably because I've been playing so much Wrath. But yeah, I did I did clean the guild up a bit. Ten days or more, you haven't logged in. I have booted you uh, again. I'm sorry. It's just to kind of clean it up a little bit. I'll probably go in every day, and I'll probably boot 10 days or more every day. And, you know, if you're playing a character once a week, well, then you you won't get booted. But if, if you're taking a break, you know, you're not sure if you're com you'll come back. I have removed the character, and if you need an invite, just uh, reach back out and chat. Talk to me! Oh, we're not doing that. That's a 15 minute turnaround. <laughs> a 15 minute flight and for what? For what? <laughs> Jesus. Oh gosh. Yeah, I, I guess we're running. Yeah. It's it's going to be it's going to be shorter just to run than it is to do the 15 minute flight all the way up and then all the way back down. That's that's like a heinous amount of flight time, I think. Yeah, it's it's bad. Kyle, it's going well. Thanks for being here. So so we have a little bit of a run across the barrens. I have to make sure that I don't run right through the crossroads.
Sean, good afternoon. Thanks for being here. Tim, how popular is Hardcore at the moment? I mean, every time I do a Slash Who, there's uh, 50 people or more. That's not going to happen here in the Barrens because we're Alliance and uh, we're out of level range. But yeah, every time I do like a Slash Who, tons of people seemingly playing the game. Uh, the population of the server is still marked as as full, I believe. So yeah, I, I think like I think like I took a little break and a couple people took a little break, but I, I think that like the majority of people are still are still stuck in pretty hard to hardcore. At least that's what it seems like. Slash who one to two. And it, it's really a shame that it only caps out at finding 50 people. Which is a real shame because we, we never get a true idea of exactly how many people are playing. But yeah, slash, slash all level 1s, it's 50 or more. So it, it could be 200, it could be 1,000, it could be 52 people. All we know is that it's more than 50. But yeah, I, I think maybe some people took a little break, some people came back. It, it'll probably continue to be really, really populated, um, at least until the new season of Mastery comes out or whatever it's going to be. And, th and then I think, of all things, I think like a new season of Vanilla has the potential to pull people away from Hardcore. If they, if they have to split their time between the two. But we'll see. A couple weeks we'll have BlizzCon and we'll know, we'll know all the juicy details of all the future plans for, uh, for Classic. There you go, Alex. That was a good call. Yeah, slash who two, just two, finds uh, 30 level twos. So right now, on the Alliance side of things, there are 30 level twos. If we do, if we expand that to include three, we probably hit our 50 mark. Yeah, see, now, now we get no usable data. We get no usable data like that. Uh, slash who level 3, 50 people or more. Slash who level 4, same same thing. So yeah, I, I think it's fair to say that um, it, it's still really populated. Despite the fact that like for some people burnout is a real thing. Now, are there going to be horde NPCs <clears throat> at the towers over here? I'm, I'm kind of hoping that there aren't. But if there are, we're going to have to find some way to avoid them. Unless they're lower level, then I can just run. Although I suppose if they hit me, that does make me PvP flagged. Well, we're about to find out. I, I don't see any horde NPCs. Oh, the tower's been burned out. That might have been my first clue that nobody's going to be here. Is like the fact that the tower has actually been burned out. Would have been good observational data. Yeah, the quest givers are down here. Are they horde NPCs? 
I should probably avoid him. They're like level 25. They're not even going to aggro me, but if they did, I could just run away from them. Or I could kill them. That's always an option, too. The only bad part is, I'm not going to be able to take the shortcut to the charred veil that goes through Sunrock. Uh, we're gonna have to... We're gonna have to come all the way up and down. Do I need to grab this flight point? Because I really don't want to. I really I really don't want to go all the way up there to grab the flight point. I, I'm hoping that the flight point in Desilus will be a direct connector to Ratchet. That's I, I'm, I'm kind of banking everything on that concept. On the concept that the, the flight point from Desilus, from Nigel's point, will be a direct flight to Ratchet. If that turns out to not be the case, then I'm probably not going to have a connector. But yeah, we're, we're going to find out because I, I really don't want to come all the way up here. It's going to be enough of a run to get us into, into Charred Vale. I probably should have sat on the 15 minute flight point, but that was going to be like really, really boring. And then there was still going to be a lot of running at the end of it anyway. It just didn't make sense. She needs a good run after her vacation. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, probably. I, I, this was the kind of travel... I was kind of dreading the travel, you know? I knew that we had to come out here eventually. But I have, I have been dreading the travel. I just... I, sometimes I wish there was stuff we could at least fight things along the way, but obviously when you have to travel through a bunch of, like, low-level zones, you can't do anything. There's nothing for you to fight along the way. Do I need any of these herbs, maybe? Like, maybe we could do some herbing. Yeah, here we go. Here's a green one. That has a chance to give me a skill up. It did give me a skill up. How polite of it. Yeah, that's true, David. We get a little bit of experience for discovering new areas. Yeah, like, it's not bad. It's just, it is good to be able to fight some stuff while you travel, though. Obviously, like, for us, that's not going to be an option. Level 17.
I have to make sure not to run like into Sunrock Retreat out of reflex. We ha we have to go up and around. Although, I, I wonder if there's any way through the town that avoids the NPCs, because they do have a, a, such a nice little shortcut that goes right back into the Charred Vale. I wonder if we could avoid their NPCs, or maybe they'll be lower level and they won't aggro us. Let's just have a little peek. If I see anybody that's like a skull, like this guy's level 40, oh shite. Okay, yeah, no, they, <laughs> they they don't want us taking a shortcut. Oh man, if they had only been level 20, then I could have just ran through the town. There's a really easy way to get down into the Charred Vale, like right back here. Could have shaved some time off. Level 40 guards, just enough to make me not do it, you know? Even if it, if it had been one level 40 guard, I might have bubbled and tried to run past him. But two level 40 guards flanking each other? I can't risk it. I see like a little trail here on the mini-map. I, I wonder where this leads. Oh, oh, come on. It, it's so clearly a trail. Oh, that's rude. So rude. What, what's up there? That's frustrating. <laughs> There's obviously something up there. It, it looks like a trail. I thought maybe that would be a little shortcut. No, there are, there are no shortcuts. There are no shortcuts today. Can't, can't take any shortcuts. Our legs are too short. That That's rude. Yeah. No, she, she doesn't appreciate that kind of language. I mean, I mean, she should still be able to climb up the thing. You like grab roots and stuff and you pull yourself up, you know. Uh, Briarthorn? Briarthorn, somebody's out here herbing. Okay, yep. Yeah. Possible skill up. We haven't had any good music tracks either. The music in Desolus is probably also not going to be good, is it? Um, hmm. There we go, that's better. It was supposed to be Ashenvale music. Maybe that'll start soon. Am I going two-handed mace only? No. We have a mace and a shield. I I'd like to get a better one-hander and go back to using a one-hander and a shield. But so far the one-hander we have is kind of mediocre. I've been saving up for one on the auction house, but I, I haven't checked the auction house in weeks, so... The item that I thought was going to sell for... Going to be bought for 24 gold is probably now on sale for like 45 gold. 
but uh, we'll, we'll have to check again. I think it was a level 40 mace I was looking at anyway, so it's not even like close to our level yet. Yeah, I think we'll be we'll probably be stuck with the two-hander for a little bit longer. And we'll see. It also depends on if we get a Scarlet Monastery run in. Like, there's a, there's a shield out of Cathedral. If I can get the shield from Cathedral, then I'd be willing to spend money on a really good one-hander. What's my average viewership top 10? Uh, it's usually around like 120 to 140, but it's been slow recently. I, I think like generally interest in hardcore is waning. And I think that like generally right now, like interest in WoW is kind of at like an all time low. For like the last year, it's at an all time low for the last year. But yeah, 100 is really good, yeah. I'm happy to have all you guys here. But the average has been anywhere between like 120 to 140. Can you have more than one character on hardcore servers? Absolutely. Yep, yep. Each character only has the one life, but you, you can have as many as you can have on the server, yeah. BlizzCon will re revive WoW? Uh, yeah. Or, or put several nails in, in several different coffins and then bury them under a, a pile of dirt, yeah. It'll do one or the other. But yeah, even sometimes even like negativity hype is still like, is still good. <laughs> Can still be good. It depends on what they announce. Yeah. If, they, if, if the announcements are well received. And, and if people feel like they're getting what they want. From the future of WoW. Then yeah, I think that interest will spike. If people feel like they're not going to get anything they want. And they still don't see a future for WoW where it like gets better. Then maybe people won't care. It could go either way. I don't know. Would people stash gold? Yeah, absolutely, Brad. Yep, that's we call that meta progression. Yeah, I have a bank alt, and yes, you should definitely every every chance you get, you should mail your gold off. Now I'm doing a bad job of it. I'm kind of using my gold as an incentive to not get killed, and I'm hoping to buy, use this gold to buy a weapon soon. But yeah, ideally, I should mail this off to my to my bank alt. My rogue that's listed here, my rogue actually died with two gold on her. And that was two gold that I should have mailed off to my bank alt. So, yeah. Guff, maybe on Twitch it is, yeah. I, I have my own metrics to look at, and that's what I'm looking at, so. It's probably just a me thing. Uh, my numbers have been lower in the last month than they have been. I just I, I can I can see the trend of like when things really popped off. When I can see when they leveled off, and I can see that they've been slowly coming down. So, but that could just be a me thing. There's obviously still a bunch of interest in the game. Um, it just isn't. I don't think it's at its peak peak. I, I think I think it must have fallen off at least a little bit. But again, could just be me. I, I don't look at Twitch so. Did I play the Wrath Palette today? Yeah, I played a little bit earlier. Yep. We did about an hour of questing on the Wrath Palette. Quest log is full. Well 
So, which which centaur clan do I want to kill? I, I know there's probably an item from Rep that's going to be better for me if I kill one or the other. Like, who, who do I want to go after? The Magram? Or the other guys? Or the Gelkis? Is this Classic WoW? This is Classic WoW. Yeah. This is, this is vanilla era classic WoW, because technically Wrath of the Lich King is also classic WoW. So this is a uh, classic era classic. Hello. Have a good one. This is a hardcore server. So this is the Defias Pillager server. Which is a U.S. East official hardcore server. It could be that more people are interested in the upcoming Mahakara tournament than just leveling. Yeah. No, leveling is boring AF. So that, that absolutely makes sense. I, I'm sure, like, obviously from, like, a viewership perspective, watching a, a Mahakara tournament play out live is a lot more interesting than watching some loser level of character. Like, <laughs> I, I definitely agree with you on that. Yeah, some of you guys would rather would rather watch leveling or something chill, but I, I think obviously like a, a large chunk of the internet viewership are probably interested in like seeing a bunch of people's time thoroughly wasted in, a, in an entertaining manner. Yeah, I, I think there's like obviously a large viewership for that kind of thing. Uh, let's come over here and we will find there's a wagon or something we have to investigate. Don't really remember. If we pass anything on the way, maybe we'll fight something today. Maybe we'll actually fight something. Maybe I will target a mob. D don't hold your breath though, I don't, I don't see any mobs. Here we go. Perfect. A level 32 green. That's exactly what we need to be fighting. A level 32 green. All right, let's give a listen to what the music is like natively here in Desolus. And then we'll make a choice. Let's just give it a listen for a bit. Baron's music, mainly, mainly Baron's music. <laughs> Goomba's donut free. That's awesome. So Goomba finally got his stitches out today. Not stitches, staples. Literal staples. Like it, it's 2024 and when when a dog gets fixed, we're still stapling them closed with metal staples. So yeah, he got his staples out today, which means he can like he had a little donut he was wearing for a while to keep him from going after his junk. And uh <laughs> now he can be donut free. He is gonna be a much happier Goomba. And apparently when staples are ready to come out, they can just pull them right out. 
It's weird. I hope I don't ever have to be stapled. Because if I get stapled, I'm gonna I'm gonna end up pulling the staples out too early. Yeah, I'm gonna get annoyed with it. I'm gonna pull them out like a week before I'm supposed to, just because I can. Getting stapled isn't bad, David. Yeah, I, I just worry that I, I'd want to pull them out soon. I'd be like, oh, I feel fine. I can just pull these suckers out. <laughs> Whereas, like, I feel like if I got stitched up, I, I, I don't know if I'd mess with it. It, it. it seems like it's more permanent. Like, someone has to clip it. But if the staple can just come right out, I feel like I'd just pull it right out. A couple more days and I might have pulled Goombas out. I could see that they were looking kind of ready to come out. Now the music is really loud. Let's fix that. There we go. Um, I don't need to be fighting these guys. Not even a little bit. I thought we had to go there to do something, but maybe it's a follow-up. Let's let's turn this in in case there's a follow-up for it. I feel like he's going to have us come back over this way. Um, and, yeah, we'll see. They're at level, so... I should probably just focus on killing the centaur. That would be the smart thing to do. We also have the quest down here. We need to do this to get the last quest for, like, Scarlet Monastery. The one that rewards a good weapon, I think. But we're not going to be doing it yet. We'll probably try to do it, like, right at level 39. I I'd like to eventually do, uh... Do armory again. I don't know why I keep thinking this is a way that I can get in. It looks so perfect. It leads you it leads you right back to the flight master. It looks like such a perfect way to get into town. I can see the trail on the mini-map, it's so perfect, and then I run back there and of course I can't go that way. Of course I can't go that way. No, I have to come down to the pillars. Yeah, see now we have to go find people. Do I want to do this now? Not really. No, I'm not going to I'm not going to do that now. It doesn't mean we won't do it at some point while we're here. I just don't want to do it now. It's level 33, so yeah, maybe we'll do it before we leave. I'm just not This this place is pretty full of enemies. And uh I I think I would rather go fight some of these guys. Kodo roundup we can skip until later. Okay. Yeah, that's the plan. I'm not sure why. But it occurs to me that this person is running sideways. Uh, I'm not really sure uh, what creates that kind of in-game behavior, what kind of manipulation of the controls might do that, but he was definitely just running sideways. Uh, I guess if I did this... I guess if I did this, it, it probably looks exactly the same. Maybe he was doing this. That's, uh, that's fingers on W and D. And then, like, the camera tilted slightly. Nope, nope, that's not it. No, see, I can barely replicate it. I don't know, maybe he was a bot. I'm gonna vote... Bot. Yeah, probably a bot. Yeah, that's it's gotta be a bot, right? <laughs> I don't know what, what else would create that kind of movement. Yeah, like this, maybe. 
Except I don't know why one would control their character like this. Yeah, my, my vote is on bot. Yeah, I get what it is, but it's like there's... I, this is what he was doing, and you have to hold down two keys on the keyboard and manipulate your mouse a bit for this. It's like, I, th I don't see a reason why a, why a human being would, would move their character like this over the long term, you know? Like, if you're traveling to a place, it, it doesn't make sense to, to do this. It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to do it that way. Not for a long trip. I'm gonna vote bot. Unless those are the only buttons that work on his keyboard. Yeah, this, let's say those are the only buttons that work. So he has to run like this. Perpetually, forever, like... This is how he has to run. No, look, he's fine now. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I guess you could do this. Have you ever heard of there being 50 people in Desolus? H have you ever heard of that before in your life? Because I've never heard of that. I I've never heard of there being 50 people or more in Desolus. So yeah, like the question, is Hardcore still really busy? If we can get 50 people into Desolus in the middle of the afternoon, uh, you know, on a Wednesday, then yeah, I would say that Hardcore is still popping off. Because I don't know, that's a lot of people to be hanging out in Desolus. Nobody likes Desolus. Nobody comes here to see the beautiful, like, you know, gorgeous scenery. They come here out of necessity. That's a lot of people. If you strafe run, you avoid getting dazed. I guess he, he probably took those keys off his keyboard and, like, only left himself strafing keys to be a pro. Like, yeah, just tra train, like, the pro reflexes. Like, don't ever press forward. Always be strafing. Hashtag always be strafing, right? I like it. Yeah, Desolus was always desolate. Like, there was never anybody here. Um, because people came here out of necessity, and then they got the heck out. I, I think I'm just gonna fight these guys. I don't really care about the rep rewards or anything like that. I probably won't farm the rep up enough to care about the rewards. So I think I'm just gonna start killing these guys. I think that's what we did on the last paladin we took through here, so... just kill them till I get friendly and then the other faction yeah the other faction will have quest yeah that lady is like down over here I remember last time getting quest from her to come back and like steal food baskets and maybe fight a named guy all right yep yeah, we're, we're doing the same exact thing we did last time so that works I hope that wasn't a big ol' heal that she was about to cast. That would be unfortunate.
And we are out of mana. I'm glad I bought a bunch of water. That was a good call. Uh, apparently we're going to need it if we're going to grind here for any length of time because like kind of a similar thing is happening that was happening on our Bloodsail Buccaneers Paladins. Like, yeah, we could fight a few greens, but eventually we need a full heal. Eventually we need all of our mana back. We just don't ha have a lot of sustain. I'm going to let him like come back to us to get killed. Yeah, I'm not in a big hurry to chase him into the muck. Come on, buddy. We don't, we don't want to rust. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to go with the one-hander and the shield to see if that's a little bit better. As far as, like, I, I'd like to either keep my mana going or keep my HP going. Like, I'd like to keep one of them going. I, I don't really want to have to drink and full heal myself after every few fights. I'd, li I'd like for one to be in a good spot. Bandages? Who needs bandages when you got heals? Yeah, I mean, I'm capped out. I got, I got silk. Yeah, we could bandage. I have a couple. But I still, I'm still gonna have to drink if my, if my mana is low. Let's try the shield for a bit and see. Why don't you raid in any videos? You've checked all of them. You then you missed the ones where I raided. <laughs> then quite frankly, you missed a couple. But to be fair to you, even though you're completely wrong. Uh, it's only like a couple. Yeah, I've only I've only recorded a couple of raids. I think I have two or three Nax runs. So you are completely incorrect, but I understand the sentiment and where you're coming from with that comment. Yeah, I don't have many. And to answer the actual question you asked, which was why, uh, I don't like pugs. Yeah, I hate pugging. And so now I have a guild in Wrath. So maybe in the future. Rating will be more enjoyable to me, but we'll see. That is a big heal. They got a big ol' heal. I don't like it. So don't fight the wind chasers. Got it, got it, got it. I like how these guys have flies swarming around them. Hey, do you guys think that the centaur in Dragonflight have flies swarming around them? Do you think that like as they stand there, flies swarm around them? I bet they don't. I, they're too pretty to have flies swarming around them, but this guy's got a fly problem. It is not good. They look like they're biters too. I do have a stun, but it's often on cooldown. In that case, I probably could have used it, but it's only going to help me out every once in a while. I'm just gonna, I'm going to mainly, I'll avoid them, and then like if I have to fight them, I'll try to save my stun for them, I guess. But I, I think I'm just going to try to avoid fighting the ones I can heal. We're, we're blowing through enough mana as it is in a normal fight. Oh, this guy's out of here. He's gone. He's totally gone. I, I could have uh, blessinged a freedom out of that one. I do have it keybound. This dude, like, tried to go get help, but I don't think he can get help, right? Because he's not hes not technically aggressive to it, so he, he couldn't even go get help if he wanted to. He, cu he couldn't get help if he wanted to. Nobody cares, because they're like, Oh, that person's fine. We're kind of friendly with that person. They're fine. Oh, they're killing you? It's fine. They're fine with it, because they're fine with us.
Some of these guys are level 35. I, I'd love to focus on the ones that are like level 32. John, good afternoon. Welcome to the stream. It must be a misunderstanding as we murder him. Right. <laughs> it's probably fine. No, he doesn't mean it. Look how friendly he looks, though, as he's murdering you. I should, uh, let's see. Um, reputation. And we are getting reputation with the Gelkis, right? And th this is the Magrum. So they're going to be hated eventually. Let's put this down here. We can watch it degrade until they actually hate us. That's fun. <laughs> Something funny from guild chat. Sorry guys, this was funny. Laco says, I'm giving this one more try. I can't do these beginning quests for the fourth time. It's killing me. B Sad Dog says, I think I've gotten numb to them. I've died so many times. <laughs> I, I think I've gotten numb to them. <laughs> You've gotten numb to all of the beginning quests. Yeah. That's crazy. I, I'm sure a lot of people feel that way. You just like, you get numb to the beginning quests. You don't even really think about it anymore. But what happens then is sometimes on those beginning quests, because you're numb to them, sometimes you die on those beginning quests. <laughs> and that's the worst feeling. Oh, these guys are these guys are attacking me. I thought this was not, not okay. I thought we were friends here. I thought you liked us just a little bit. Now I see. Now I know who you are. You never liked us. You always hated us. There we go. The quest giver has- oh, you again? You want to die to the kobolds in the mine again? For what? For some gold dust? For some candles? Is this the life you really want to live? Is this what you imagined for yourself in the World of Warcraft? Dying for candles again and again and again? Isn't there a candle shop in Stormwind? What, do I really need this? I can't even send you. You're not going. Go back to the inn and wait. <laughs> my life for candle right <laughs> oh gosh I mean I, I mean I've died a lot in hardcore especially back on Bloodsail Buccaneers I don't think I ever got completely numb to the intro quest but then again oftentimes we would kind of change it up you know like we, we, we would often faction hop back on Bloodsail Buccaneers like if an alliance character died you went on horde if a horde character died you went on alliance and then you could always shake it up with like a Tauren or with a Night Elf, and you could have a different start. But when you when you have meta progression, like when you can send gold to a bank alt, it makes you want to keep all of your characters on one faction. It, it makes you want to focus on one faction. You don't want to cross faction hop as much because all of your resources are on the other faction. And I, and I think that makes the beginning parts of the game really, really boring as people go again and again and again. It's like the game, it doesn't benefit you to play Horde and Alliance. It benefits you to pick one or the other and put all of your eggs in one basket. And so that way people have to do Elwyn Forest a billion times. Instead of doing Elwyn and then Duratar, um, you know, it's like they do the same quest, the exact same quest over and over and over again. Like, I, I never did it that way. We, we would always change it up from like death to death, you know? The only time like we got close to going straight again was in official hardcore, we did the two orc warriors. But I even split that up by doing the Undead Mage for a couple days. Two misses? No.
The dude in gold chair. The, yeah, the invisibility potions. That's all he gets to make now. That's all he gets to... He never gets to do anything else. All of his time, every moment of his life, is just occupied by, by making the same invisibility potion over and over and over again. It's like Groundhog's Day, but it's like Groundhog Minute. It's like the same minute happens for him over and over again. And, and it's like it's like 30 people that are just dying and going again. Has the uh, Blizz social media team, have they been spitting out, like, stats still at the end of the week? Or have they given up on, uh, on giving us hardcore stats? I know for a while they were, like, pretty good about pushing out at least one a week. But since I don't twit or tweet, I don't, I don't know. I don't see them. Edge, intellect, and spirit. Okay. Yeah, how, how many pork pies can Billy possibly eat, right? How many does he need exactly? And he's insatiable. Lael, good afternoon, man. Thanks for stopping by. Billy's been feeding the pies to Princess. That that would explain a few things, yeah. Like I th I think by Cataclysm, Princess was enormous, wasn't wasn't she? Wasn't she like much bigger boar animation than originally? This guy got help. He's breaking the covenant. Ooh, look at this. They they just turned orange. Yeah, that's right. They they don't go right to red. They go from yellow to orange. They don't, they don't care for us in this state. We, we have to break free of this because we have incoming problems. We have three seconds to death. Two, one, we gotta run. Yeah, we got, we gotta bail on that. That was looking like bad news. We are still getting into so much trouble fighting green enemies. Oh my god, so much trouble. <laughs> we're, we're still, we're still running. I think we're safe. There we go. Apparently, it's still really dangerous for us out here. Which is a, a little bit sad. I, I don't feel like the shield is really doing much to keep our HP going at all. So, maybe we switch back to the two-hander for a bit and see how we feel about that. Ah! 
these guys are the real problem. Like, these guys suck. This is, like, three guys, because, like, you know, they're, they're pets, right? But they have the same amount of HP as a normal hyena out in the world would have. They're not weaker because they're pets. That's still three mobs. Those guys are the real problem. And they patrol all around this area. So maybe if, if we stick more to the interior, we'll be safer? I'm not sure. If they mainly patrol the outskirts. Monica, good afternoon. Cloakin, welcome to the stream. Hello. Joseph, no worries, man. I I'm, I'm glad to have you here now. Thanks for hanging out. Owl Hatch says, is it bad that I haven't been in this zone for so long that I forgot it even existed? No. <laughs> it's not that bad. I mean, no, nobody really likes Desolus very much. So it's understandable. I was really surprised to find that there are more than 50 people currently in the Desolus in the middle of the afternoon. In the middle of the week. Uh, there are, for some reason, over 50 people here on the Defias Pillager server who are actually choosing to spend their time like we are in Desolus. That's a pretty amazing number. But yeah, I mean, here we are too, so apparently it's a uh, it's a popular place to be. I never thought I would see it or say it, but there it is. <laughs> Shaheen, not, not even remotely. <laughs> David says, and all 50 are probably in their own layer. That's true. There probably are about 10 layers right now. You get about 10 people per layer, you consider yourself lucky.
what dungeon is here? The Maradon dungeon. Mara. Mara in all of its three-winged glory. Never being able to find the entrance to the instance when you need your body back. Wonderful Mara. Yeah, the last time I did a full Mara run was on the Tauren Warrior. Back in like BC. It was still BC era. And the, that Maradon run, I think like the edited video was like almost three hours long. It took us over three hours to actually clear the dungeon and I had to cut like long boring stints out of the run. Where like people would go bio or someone would go AFK for another reason. It was like a raid. Like Maradon was like a three hour raid. It was like, yeah, after that, I never really wanted to do Maradon again. Oh my god, there's another player. I should probably have some potions out. That would be really smart, and apparently we've been collecting quite a few potions. 400 to 585 HP. That's a decent little chunk, I guess. Uh, I could also pop some of the, You know, these elixirs, though, at level 36, I, I probably have access to use more powerful elixirs, don't I? I should look into the cost on the auction house for more powerful elixirs. I, th I think these might be like nearing the end of their usefulness. Oh, 
Did they get expensive, Alex? Right on. Of course they do. That makes sense. I could probably herb them for you, Alex, but I would have to know, like, what they are to hang on to them to send to you. Carnifexia, that's awesome. Congratulations. healer class for Wrath. I mean, Pallies are the best healers uh, in the game in Wrath, but any anybody would do well. Druid healing is fun because you just slam a bunch of uh, heal over times on everybody and like everybody just passively heals. Uh, and a shaman, I've never, I've never really healed on a shaman. But yeah, but basically in Wrath any of the healers are good, but a Paladin is considered the best, I believe. I love that we live in an age where there are so many different versions of WoW to play. That every time you get tired with WoW, what you do instead of like going to play another game is you just go play a different version of WoW. Like <laughs> we're we're really lucky uh, to live in that period of time because you know like in the past before Classic we just had to live with retail. It's like whatever retail was, that was the only version of WoW you got to have, and you either found a way to like it. Or you did what I used to do is where I would log in to a character, I would open my map, I would look at all the stuff I could potentially do, I'd stare at it for a minute, I would heave a big sigh, and then I would log out of the game. That's what I used to do a lot of times when I was stuck with like one version of WoW to play that I wasn't like super stoked about. I'd log in, I'd look around, I would log out and feel empty inside. <laughs> And now we just say, ah, I'm sick of Wrath, I'll go play Classic, I'm sick of Hardcore, I'm gonna go play Wrath. Like, we just can bounce back and forth. It's pretty great. It's a pretty great time to be a WoW fan. And now we, we just need Retail to get to a point where, like, we have a reason that we could potentially enjoy Retail. When retail gets to a point where I feel like my character goes on some kind of like RPG style journey, like when that happens again, I'll be more than pleased. Because I, I would love a reason to just jump into retail sometimes and play some retail. But yeah, they have to they have to give us that reason. At least they have to give me that reason because right now I've, I haven't been able to find one. So it's up to them. Yeah, David, I think they will, They will, but it won't be 11.0 that does the world revamp. The, the world revamp will probably happen in 12.0. Everyone's pretty sure that for 11.0 we're going to we're gonna go see what's on the other side of Azeroth. And then, like, by the time we go back to the... Uh, that gives them time also. That gives them time to make sure that when they do update the, the old world, uh, that they do it as currently as they can to the current lore. It's like, so if they want to show us, like, the other side of Azeroth and they want to have stuff happen there, it is better to wait for the world revamp so that if anything critical happens that could, like, change the shape of a, a zone or anything like that, they can put it in afterwards. 
You know, as opposed to getting the world revamp and then going to uh, the other side of the planet in the next expansion and then already feeling like the revamp is, is behind, you know. Yeah, 12.0, I think. Alex doesn't want retail to be good. He doesn't have enough time to split his time any more ways. That's understandable. Yeah, it'll, it'll be nice because, like, w when they changed the world for the Cataclysm, it was like they broke a lot of the zones, you know? They just destroyed them. A lot of the zones are in shambles. Uh, a lot of them are a fraction of what they used to be. A lot of them are, are a complete mess. And and then you had to live with that mess, you know, for over ten years. You've had to, if you went to those zones, you had to deal with the mess. Yeah, I, I think that they they admitted that, like, narratively, what they did with the Cataclysm was a bad way to revamp the world. I remember seeing like a bit from an interview with Ian where he basically said like he basically said they they painted themselves into a corner uh, by using like the cataclysm as the way to reshape the old world that they they had painted themselves into a corner basically like, narratively with it and it made it so those those zones didn't age well because even a couple of years after the cataclysm you're like okay like cataclysm is over but I level through the zone and all I'm hearing about is the cataclysm they just they didn't age well. They were fun they were fun right out the gate, but they didn't age well. Yeah, Mark, we're back on hardcore. We did we did wrath a little bit earlier. I, I, I chose to go to the Borean Tundra. And I just got really bored. <laughs> like I got really bored with what we were doing like super quickly. And so I decided to to first take a little break, and then I decided that we were gonna play hardcore instead. Yeah, I got I got killed in Wrath. Like I wasn't even paying attention. I was so bored that I wasn't even looking at my HP, and I died. And I was like, oh, okay. Like I'm totally zoned out. And so we we pivoted into some hardcore. I, I've been having a better time with it. We'll we'll play some more Wrath tomorrow, and we'll go to the Howling Fjord. People said that maybe the Howling Fjord would be a little bit less boring. Ah, uh, then the Boreen Tundra. I mean, Justin, that's true, but but it's the way it's the way that they phrase it. Like when you talk to the quest givers and stuff, they're like, "This just happened just now. Deathwing just passed overhead, and now all the elementals are pissed. And there's cultists that just got here. And so, like when it when it has just happened for ten years, and it just happened, that's the mistake. The mistake is that all all of the narrative framing around all of the quests and the Cata rework zones reference the Cataclysm in some way, not as a past event or something that had happened but as something that was happening right then. The elementals were in revolt right then. The Twilight Cultists had just descended into the area right then, and now they're running the show. Like, it was the narrative phrasing for, like, the quest that kind of, like, it made it not age well at all. And also, narr narratively, then, you're just stuck with that being the current event that's happening right now. Like, the Cataclysm is currently happening right now in all those zones while you quest through them. It's not a past event that happened. Mark, you had a better time questing in Northrend as the, on the Alliance than Horde? Yeah. From what I remember of the opening questing for the Alliance, it was much more enjoyable than what I have seen on the Horde side so far. And the funny thing is, like, until Classic, I only ever played on the Horde side, so I never saw, like, those times when the grass really is greener. I think the Alliance questing in Northrend is better, uh, even from what little I've experienced today, uh, than, than the Horde questing is. I think that throughout the game, a case could be made for the idea that uh, Alliance questing is always a little bit better than Horde questing. In any instance where there are different 
questing pathways uh, for the factions, I feel like the alliance is always better. Think about like the city of Boralus as compared to the frickin' uh, pyramid that the horde got to like climb up. You know, just think about stuff like that. And it's pretty obvious who gets more attention. I keep going for my mount button. We don't have a mount. There will be there will be no mounting. All right, now I can come over here. I can talk to this lady and I can get her quest. That's what we're doing. Somewhere on this road, Rexgar. Rexgar is here. And, uh, yeah, he, I don't think he can attack us unless we attack him. But he'll probably still be really scary if we come across him. Three and a half levels till mount. Yeah. 30, we'll be 37 pretty soon. We're, we're like one bubble away from 37. So yeah, three, three and a half. Like three full levels and then a bubble. And so what that means is that's about 40 hours, 40 hours of playtime. <laughs> three and a half levels, uh, roughly 40 hours of playtime. And we will have achieved, we will have achieved that. Absolutely. It's going to be a lot of playtime still. It's not going to be a soon thing. That's the sad part. Uh, what is our slash played? Three days, three hours. 72, 72, 75 hours. I think I'm pretty sure. I can't do math that well. Three days and three hours. I'm pretty sure our play time is about 75 hours of play time. To get to, uh, to, get to level 36. That's a chunk of time. That is a big old chunk of time. That's about what it takes to get a Joyous Journey character from like 1 to max, I feel like. About 75 to 80 hours. <laughs> we did, Mark says, we need the Joyous Journey buff for hardcore. <laughs> Yeah, the other thing about it is like even if even if you leveled faster in hardcore, I think like people would still die in the same ways, you know what I mean? Like I don't I don't think that somebody leveling up faster in hardcore would mean that they would die less or get to a higher level. I think the death would just happen quicker, you know? That's kind of what I feel like. Now, what what happens with like a, a JJ buff though is like you can outlevel areas faster, which which can make you a little bit safer more quickly, I guess. I don't think we'll ever see an XP buff for Hardcore. <laughs> but I think it'd be funny to see people rushing to their death instead of like going slowly at it, you know? They'd be leveling up super fast but also getting killed super fast. They should do seasons of Hardcore so we can have like fun mechanics like that. Yeah, the, the season of Hardcore leveling quickly. And like just watch people level to 20 like super fast but also like how many people just keep dying along the way a 20 to 25 percent buff yeah that'd be like that'd be like pretty even keel where seventy percent XP buff would be fun times, yeah. Seventy percent would be wacky, wacky leveling fun times, uh, where people would just like get super hyper with leveling, and then therefore they would get themselves into bad situations, you know. All right, so she gave us a quest. I'm assuming that we are going, we're going all the way back this way. All right, well that's that's fun. Again, it would be cool if maybe we can fight some stuff along the way. <laughs> Joseph. Yeah, obviously it would affect the integrity of the game. I mean, that's not the question, right? 
obviously, obviously WoW token affects the integrity of the game. If by integrity you mean like, you know, not having the ability to spend money to buy in-game things. Yeah. And like also I would hazard you not to believe everything you read on Reddit, obviously, but you know that because you're probably like a chronic Redditor, so you like you know not to believe everything that you read on Reddit, obviously. I don't have to tell you that, but I'll I'll say it anyway. Yeah. I, I, I would I would just yeah I would say like don't trust it probably it's probably not accurate but yeah they could you know it, it would be it would be like Blizzard to uh, you know, hear me out in case it actually happens this way it would it would not be unlike Blizzard to to knock it out of the park at BlizzCon okay they knock it out of the park everybody's happy retail people are happy people who want classic plus are somehow made happy people who want cataclysm are happy people who hate cataclysm are also somehow happy uh diablo fans are happy so they make everybody happy at blizzcon and a few days later they put the token into classic era <laughs> which also obviously means into hardcore because hardcore is classic era i that would not be unlike blizzard to do exactly what i just outlined so I would give it about a 12% chance of being true. 12%. <laughs> Sounds made up. <laughs> right. If, if they do it, they're going to do it exactly like I said. They're going to have a banger BlizzCon. Everyone's going to be super hyped. And then they announce the token for Classic Era. <laughs> and then they're like, wait, do you not, you don't like us now? I thought, I thought you guys liked us so much because of all the cool things we're doing for the games you love. Now you don't like us? They'll, they'll be hurt, you know, and shocked. But we thought we won you over forever. I can see it. Oh, Joseph. Oh, no. Joseph, Joseph says, I'm hoping for some StarCraft news. Oh, buddy. My man. I'm so sorry. Did no one tell Joseph? StarCraft is dead. There is no StarCraft. <laughs> there is only Zool. And an absence of good RTSs. Yeah, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure StarCraft is a dead franchise, man. I hate to say it because I love StarCraft 1. And I thought StarCraft 2 was okay, but never really felt compelled to beat the campaign even. Um, but be, yeah, there is no StarCraft development team at Blizzard. There hasn't been for a long time. Keep it real. They, they done fired those guys. A long time ago. Okay, we're not doing this quest right now, but mainly because I don't have room in my quest log. <laughs> yeah, F's. F's for StarCraft. I remember when I was young, and by young I mean like 20, because I'm old AF. I remember, like, just, I remember thinking there's got to be a world of StarCraft one day, <laughs> right? Aren't they eventually going to make a StarCraft MMO the same way they made a WarCraft MMO? Because there was WarCraft, and then there was WoW. So if there's StarCraft, then there must be Sao. <laughs> it didn't really work that well. Um, yeah, but there never was a world of StarCraft, so what do I know? But I remember, I remember liking StarCraft so much that I was just, like, always hoping that they would make an MMO somehow set in the StarCraft universe. Scow. <laughs> right on, Alex. I'll take a look at it when I log out. Oh, Joseph, yeah, there isn't one. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry to be the person that has to tell you this. That's really, that's a rough way to find out in front of me and God and everybody here. But there, yeah, there is no more. There is no more StarCraft. It, has, it hasn't been an active development like since StarCraft II concluded. Uh, however, the, the guys who made StarCraft, like initially they've gone off and like they're, they, they've either got their own development team now or and they're, they're making a new game that's gonna come out sometime in the next couple years. Um, I don't remember the name of it. But yeah, the, the StarCraft guys, the, they still exist. They're still out there. They just don't work for Blizzard anymore. And they're currently developing their own sci-fi RTS. That, unsurprisingly, when I saw it at the Gamescom demo or whatever it was, it looked looked a lot like StarCraft. So, like, that type of game isn't totally dead, but StarCraft as a franchise is completely dead. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, crushing people's hopes. That's what I do. I crush everyone's hopes with reality. Yeah, I use reality to hurt your feelings. That's all I do here. <laughs> it's like every time somebody starts talking about how much they look forward to like to Classic Plus, and they're like, I just hope that we kill the Lich King, and then w Classic WoW just goes in a different direction uh, from Wrath. And I'm just like, oh no, <laughs> I gotta tell you something. That's never gonna happen. Here's why. Yeah, it's like when that, I do that all the time, I have to do it. I just don't, I just don't want people to be able, I don't, I don't want people to like live expecting a thing that's never gonna happen. Cause that hurts so much when you just spend so much of your time. Like I said, I thought we were gonna get a StarCraft MMO. How stupid did I feel like years later? When I realized, Robert, they're not going to make two MMOs and compete with their own products, dummy. Like, how embarrassed did I feel? Years later, you know? For even wanting a StarCraft MMO. I just felt like a big idiot. I didn't see reality, you know? Reality was they would never have done that. Lizzie, welcome, man. Good afternoon to you. Thanks for being here. Everyone wanted a Wrath 2.0 after BFA. Look what we got. Are you referring to Dragonflight as as like a Wrath 2? <laughs> I mean, we, we got, yeah, we got Shadowlands, which was bad. We got Dragonflight, which has not been good. Dragonflight tried to capture like some of the vibes of Wrath, you know, with like the snowy landscapes and stuff like that. It tried to like kind of cash in on like a Northrend vibe. But it, you don't you don't get a Northrend vibe when you're sailing at, at 300 miles per hour like over the landscape like it doesn't give you a Northrend vibe. It gives you a I'm going really 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 fast through the landscape vibe. Not really looking at much. Have I tried Swoter before? Yeah, I played Swoter when it first came out. I was an Imperial agent and I was a healer, and I love me some Hutball. Mm hmm That character still exists. I actually went to, uh, a couple years ago, I was going to record a series on the channel for Swotor, but the uh, Star Wars music is so heavily monetized, like, copyright, copywritten, you know. I, I, I couldn't put the game on the channel with the music that it was supposed to have, uh, so I decided that I just couldn't, I couldn't do it. The vibe wouldn't be right. Bounty Hunters were awesome. Yeah, the, the game was really good. It had it had good class design. I, I liked the classes. They were all distinct. I really loved, like, the storytelling was obviously top-notch. The fact that, like, every class got its own storyline, and also every class got its own companion characters. And the companion characters had personalities that would grow and develop over time, like, you know, like, like as if you were playing Mass Effect. <laughs> yeah, that was, like, it was amazing. What an amazing game. Like, so, so ahead of its time. In, in, with so many things, with like the in-game storytelling and the voice acting and the stuff like that, like definitely in a league of its own for those things. But yeah, but it didn't kill WoW. And back then, for an MMO to be successful, back when it came out, you either killed WoW or you were you were a non-successful game. And like that's kind of how I feel. Like that's what happened to Swotor. And then I feel like a lot of things changed with like its pay structure. Yeah, it just kind of like. Since it didn't kill WoW, it wasn't treated the right way, like, from the get-go. Although it has hung around, like, surprisingly, it has hung around in whatever state it's in now. Which I'm pretty sure is, like, a done-done state. I don't think- they're not developing any more content for SWOTOR, are they? I thought they were out of development for it. Oh yeah, you sent them on missions, too? Oh man, man, SWOTOR was so good. <laughs> Star Wars The Old Republic, Alex. Yeah, Star Wars The Old Republic was a, was a Bioware MMO released back in like 2011? Was it 2011? 2012? It's either 2011 or 2012. Really good game. Amazing stories. Like every class had its own storyline. Its own MSQ. And they were really well done. They were well voice acted. They were well written. Uh, the cinematography was well executed. Like... The game, the game was a solid game. 
Like it really was a solid MMO. They they had the the 52 point talent trees, you know, similar to uh, classics talent trees. At a time when WoW had already moved away from those talent trees, Swotor kept those talent trees. Swotor has new content coming in January. Okay, did somebody else pick the game up? I, I thought the original studio was done making content for it. And that was like a while back that I heard that. They have new content coming in January. That's really cool. I, I wouldn't mind giving the game a look one of these days, but the, the unfortunate reality of it is for me to make content on SWOTOR or like on YouTube, I have to turn the music completely off. I, I can't have any of the in-game music play. I'd, I'd have to put on some like chill, like immersive music in the background underneath it. Because yeah, I, I, can't, I can't let the music play. It's all Star Wars music. Disney owns all of it, so. Yeah, maybe next next time there's an extended maintenance, maybe I'll fire it up. It'd probably be more interesting to most people than New World was. Bioware sold it to Broadsword Studios. Okay. I I don't even know who Broadsword Studios are, so that's a little scary. If I if I was a if I had been a Swotor player and Bioware was selling to Broadsword Studios, I'd probably stop playing. <laughs> like, I'm glad they're still making content though, I, I hope it's good. It, it, the game the game didn't turn out being like pay to win now that somebody else owns it, did it? Like, I can't go into the cash shop and buy like a bunch of awesome gear for my guy, can I? That's kind of what I have to do. For me to ever like boot the game up again, I just have to know if it's like somehow pay to win now. I, I don't count character boost as pay to win. Account like actual end game in game items. Did Disney make Star Wars better? Star Wars was was never super amazing. Like the first three, the original trilogy was so good because it was so good for its time and like the way they filmed everything, like on location and with the actual models, it, it made it made it last. Like it had a long shelf life because uh, it was made like to the highest quality. But, the, but Star Wars as a story and as a universe, like, that was never great. You know what made Star Wars great was probably the Clone Wars animated series. The Clone Wars animated series was probably the first step towards any kind of Star Wars that was actually really good. Because even the original movies were just kind of like, okay. Yeah. They were amazing because of how, like, well they stood the test of time. But from, like, a storytelling standpoint, like... I don't know that it ever was amazing. Until we got into like the Clone Wars animated series. And then I feel like the storytelling and the, the, the world building of the universe like got to a really good point. The new shows are hit, or, hit and miss. Yeah, like some of them are good. Like, Mandalorian Season 1 and 2 were amazing. Uh, season 3 obviously went the wrong way and, like, became less amazing. Uh, Andor was really top-notch. Like, one of the best shows I've watched, like, in years, definitely. Andor was really good. Um, Obi-Wan was horrible, and it should be, like, they should feel ashamed of themselves for making Obi-Wan at, at all. Um, what else? Uh, Ahsoka was okay. It started off really lackluster for me, uh, but it got better as it went on. But yeah, the, the, the shows have been really hit or miss. And they all have like different production values. Like they all seem to have a different budget, which makes the quality of them all seem different to me. And when you're ha when you're trying to build a cinematic universe, like the quality of like the cinematography and the quality of the props and the quality of the stage dressing, all of that has to be consistent. For me to believe that the dude from Andor could ever meet and interact with somebody from one of the other shows, like if you want a, a contained universe where these characters might interact in their timelines, like y you kind of have to have the same production values and the same quality amongst every show, and they definitely did not achieve that. So that was a little weird. Star Wars is now free to play with a cat with the but with a cash shop. Okay, they have a cash shop. Obviously, they have a cash shop, right? Everybody has a cash shop. I'm assuming you can buy things on there like character boost. 
but yeah, I, I guess as long as you can't buy like in-game items. Although you can probably buy gold. I bet I bet you can buy in-game gold, can't you? On the on the sword or cash shop, can you purchase in-game currency? I bet that you can. And, and by that token, you can you can buy gear because then you can just buy it on the auction house. Yeah, Rogue One was good. Rogue One was good for the same reason that Andor is good. is because the Rogue One movie and now the Andor show, it, it, it takes you to like, it puts your boots on the ground in the Star Wars universe and it like, it shows you that like, it's like a daily life kind of thing. You see, you see different sides of the Star Wars universe at a really mundane level uh, in Andor. And so that kind of makes the world seem more believable. Like you can actually see it as a world where human beings live. As opposed to just being the galaxy far, far away with the magical sorcerers, people with the swords that glow. Like, and shows like Andor and movies like Rogue One, like, they bring your boots to the ground of the universe and they show it to you from a different angle uh, than you're used to seeing it. And that's what makes them so good. Yeah, so Swotor is like basically just like WoW. Like WoW has the WoW token, you can buy gold. Swotor, you can buy credits. Credits boosts and cosmetics. Oh no, but you can also buy powerful companions that can only be bought through the cash shop. Ooh. Mmm, I don't know about that one. That's bad. You know what that is? That, that hits hard with FOMO. Especially if they do something where, like, do they cycle them out of the shop? Do they offer them for a time? Here's a new companion. They are amazing. Um, all the adventures you could go on together. Do they cycle them out of the shop so that's like they're like limited time offer stuff? Because that would be super manipulative. It's already manipulative enough to sell somebody an in-game companion character to make up like a cool new character and then be like, buy it from the shop. You want it so bad. That's that's crazy. <laughs> That might be that might be worse for me than like than than pay to win. Like I don't know, like buying a a, a, a badass companion character to bum around with you and also like especially especially if they have like a story. If that if that NPC that you buy comes with like quest stories that you can go on and like learn about them and stuff, then that's 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 that's, that's terrible to sell that to somebody for money, you know, to to put that behind a paywall cuz that's actual content. I don't know if I'm okay with that. I, I have to, I, I have to be convinced of why that's okay. Do you guys think it's okay to sell companion characters? Um, what, what if, what if Blizzard sold uh, soul binds in Shadowlands? What if they tried to sell you more powerful soul binds? You know, your soulbound guys that like boosted your stats and stuff. Doesn't it feel really bad? <laughs> they cycle them out. They bring them back six months later permanently with a discount. Oh my god, that is a scandal, Joseph. Yeah, that's so manipulative. That's so manipulative, especially when you're selling a character. When you're selling a companion character. They're like slaves just put up for sale on the cash shop. <laughs> Ooh, man. Yeah, right. It's To me, it's already possibly gating content. Do they have quest lines associated with them? The companion characters you can buy on the store? Like, do you get to go through some quests with them? Because that, that would be even worse, because then that's like literal content that they're like char micro-charging you for. I bet it's not a micro-transaction either. You want to bet it's a $15 or up purchase? Who, who's got prices on this? My bet is $14.99 for a companion character in Swotor. <laughs> Until they've cycled them out with their discount. So with the discount, you could probably get them for $9.99. But I'm thinking like full retail price, is it, is it 14 bucks? There's no way, there's no way it's like $2.99, you know? There's no way it's a microtransaction. A microtransaction would be like $5 or less. That's a microtransaction. 
If it's more than five dollars, that's that's a macro transaction. They're account wide, you can use them interchangeably with the core characters in the class story. One of the ones you can buy is for ninety-nine dollars. And it stays fifteen levels ahead of your character. Oh no. That 15 levels ahead of your character, that means it escorts you through all the content and kills everything for you, basically. You, you just bought yourself a $100 account bound escort through a video game. <laughs> At that point, that's what you've done. You have bought yourself a $100 bot that's going to go out ahead of you and it's going to clear the field. And you're just going to run behind, and maybe you'll press a button every once in a while if you're feeling like really, really like giddy. You know, you might just press a button, uh, but for the most part, you're not going to be playing the game. You are going to be playing the looting game where you loot things, uh, and then you progress with the story until you're level capped. Why? L let me ask this, like, why not just buy a boost? <laughs> yeah, why would you play the game? <laughs> and furthermore, like, instead of buying the $99 companion character, just boost, but I guess the companion character can be used on any character you make after that. So yeah, it's just a permanent escort through the content. Holy, in the, and listen to this. I doubt the content in SWOTOR is challenging at all. I, I bet, I bet you can get onto any class. You can just level up in the game. You can slap buttons and it's a tab target MMO. Like you're going to clear the content. It's going to be really easy to do that. I, I bet it's super easy to play. But a hundred dollar escort bot, that's amazing. <laughs> I I don't know. So there's like, you know, the fact that I don't really agree with their uh, business practices, it, it's not going to change their business practices. Um, so that that's like a hard thing about being like a consumer is that you don't know, like, should I not ever play this game? Because I like, I grossly disagree with how they've monetized it. I, I grossly, I gross, I feel gross about it. <laughs> I feel like their monetization is gross. Um, yeah, right? Oh god. Dear lord. What have we done? We've made a terrible mistake. <laughs> Beast. I feel like I can't play the game. I feel like I feel like I could never, like, could I, could I be okay with playing the game? I don't know. Doesn't really feel like it. They use the solo old content for cosmetics, but I mean, yeah, sure. But why? That content's already going to be super easy for your max level character anyway. It's just like, just play the game. Just play the, or don't play the game. Yeah, you bought a companion character that plays the game for you. And then that's playing the game. Like, it's just, it's just so weird. Oh God. Yeah, I, I can't. I don't think I can. Cause like what? It, Cause yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to like it. That's not a game I want to like. You know, I don't want to. Oh man, the Sword Order is the best, except for their scummy, abusive, manipulative. Did I say scummy business practices? Except for that, Sword Order's the best. Like I, I don't even want to. I don't even want to give it a chance to like it. After learning that, you know, I knew that was going to happen as soon as I like dug deeper into the cash shop because there's no way that Sword Studios or whatever has any money. Who, whoever Bioware sold off to, like, of course they would have to come up with like ways to make a boatload of cash. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, to be, yeah, I mean, we, you could play it and then just kind of ignore that aspect of it. I mean, that's what I struggle with is like, yeah, I could probably play the game. I could probably ignore the, the cash shop aspect of it, knowing that it doesn't really apply to me. Like, I, I don't, I don't have to have big feelings about it, but innately, I kind of do. <laughs> like, I just like, yeah, because I know that I know there are people out there who are like very susceptible to those kinds of manipulative, especially the FOMO, like moving the, putting a character up 
looking at how cool it is and then like cycling that character off the store is like so predatory when it comes to feeding off of like fear of missing out and there are people that fall hard for that stuff you know there are people who they get compelled they have to buy every character the day it releases so that they don't lose out on it and that's what the people are that's what they're counting on when they do something like that they, they count on hooking those people who that really gets to Oh, we had a little laggy lag spike. We we had a little laggy lag. Should be coming back, but it looks good now. Yeah, it's that's right, Tim. It's sleazy. It's the worst. It's the worst kind of business practice. So yeah, it's hard. It's hard just to like I ignore that kind of thing. But I'm sure that, I'm sure there are parts of WoW's cash shop that somebody could point to and say that it's the same kind of thing. You know, the, I, I think WoW does that as well, where they cycle stuff in and out of their cash shop. And then you see it later, it comes into the to the trading post or something, you know. Like, uh, here, here, pay $25 now for this cosmetic, or in six months it'll be available in the uh, trading post. It, it's basically the same exact thing, right? It, it, it's, it's, veil, it's veiled a little bit more, but it's basically the same exact thing. Yeah, Rick, that's true. Yeah, you're not you're not getting any kind of mechanical advantage in the game for any of the stuff you can buy, except for, you know, you can buy a token. It's a slippery slope. Because, yeah, if you, if you have the ability to buy in-game credits or in-game gold with real-life money, then you have the ability to take that in-game currency, go to the in-game store or the auction house, and you can buy a mechanical advantage by way of buying gear. Like, so, to an extent, like, mechanical as in, like, paying, having a bot that clears for you? No. But mechanical in the sense that you could kit yourself out or kit out an alt and like really powerful gear and then that that makes your time in the game like easier i don't know you know it, it's like it's shades of gray and I, I think an argument could be made intelligently for either side of it This is the same group, isn't it? Oh, I'm killing one of you. I am I'm killing one of you. Now now we can go. Joseph, have a good rest of your day, man. Thanks for hanging out. See you next time. It was a lot of centaurs, yeah. Yeah, I, I've pulled them twice now. We'll try not to go for a third time, but hey, we have bubbles for days, so... It's been working out okay. Good so far. Welcome to the stream. Good morning to you. This guy is going to cause trouble. <laughs> he's, I can already tell, he, he's going to cause us a little bit of grief. Uh, we could probably kill him and then kill the other guy. It's just, it's just one extra guy. It's not too bad. We should probably get a heal in here though, just to be safe.
Rachikos, it's going well. Thanks for asking. Appreciate you being here. I am getting the impression that the drop rate for this is uh, is really bad. It seems like it's maybe a really bad drop rate. Just the feeling I've been picking up. Hanty, would I rather give up video games or coffee? Uh, neither. And you can't make me. If I couldn't play video games anymore, what would I replace it with? With watching somebody else play video games. <laughs> Yes, that would be a hobby. Watching somebody else play video games. If, if I just for some unexplicable reason could not play games anymore. I guess it would also have to do with the manner in which I could not play them. Like, why can't I play them? Were both of my hands cut off? Did I go blind? Like, what, it, what would... I would have to have more information to answer it. Because, like, what if I wanted to build Legos, but the reason I couldn't play video games was because I lost both of my hands in a horrible kitchen accident. You know? An eyesight issue, then I would probably just be really sad because the things I like to do most are play video games and read. Uh, and so I'd, pro I'd probably just, you know, I don't think I don't think I'd be hobbying very much. I I'd sit I'd sit on the porch a lot and look off into the blurry distance. And, and I and I'd wish that humanity had specked down a different talent tree, less into iPhones, more into healthcare. That would probably how I'd sp spend my days. smoke that's amazing yeah, that's incredible Pe people can do incredible things when they push themselves i guess we got all the items that's pretty awesome uh we have a turn in at nigel's point and we have a turn in all the way down here you know i really regret not setting my hearthstone at nigel's point i think i think i'm gonna go do that 
I don't think we're done with the centaur stuff. I, I'm pretty sure she has another one for us after we turn this one in. But I think I'm going to get us back to Nigel's point first. I, I'd like to set the hearthstone there. Just because that's like a big, that's big travel. I listen to video game podcasts? Yeah. I'll just, I'll just watch Asmin's channel and Belly's channel and Taliesin's channel, like, put everything on repeat. Uh, yep, I will do this. Since our bounty, that's for the ears. I could do the reclaim request chain. Ah, uh, not quite yet. This one? No. Which one, Alex? Oh, yeah, I, I don't want to do this one yet. The dwarf at Nigel's point. Uh, I think we had this conversation once before about this quest. I don't. I don't see this quest. That's the problem. <laughs> the problem is I don't see quest. And if I know see quest, I know pick up quest. I, I'm very simple that way. A unless it's like a lower level quest that I'm no longer tracking. But I, I think I have enabled. I think I have told Questy to show me under level quest. So even if it were under level, I should still see it. Oh, I don't have it checked. Show all quests below level range. I still don't see it. Yeah, we, I think, like I said, we, we had this conversation once before. I think it was, it was probably on the last paladin I brought here. And we, I don't know that there was ever a resolution for why I wasn't seeing the quest. I, I don't know that anybody ever had any ideas uh, for why I didn't see it. Because yeah, I, I remember talking about this last time we were here. Yeah, like this, this guy back here, right? Preldig, the Reclaimer. He, he's got nothing for us. He doesn't even want to talk to us when we click on him. What can I do for you? Have a good one. All right, guys, on that note, I am actually going to have to stop here for today. It's getting close to 3 o'clock. Uh, thank you guys for being here. I appreciate it. I know we had kind of a weird day. We started with Wrath of the Lich King. We pivoted into some hardcore. I don't really know what tomorrow will hold. I would like to go back onto the Wrath Pally for a little bit, take them over into the Howling Fjord, and just kind of see if that works out. And if it doesn't work out, if we're not digging it, we'll pop back over here. We could even revisit the Night Elf Warrior. Um, maybe dust her off and use up some of her rested XP. I don't know, but I will be here tomorrow around 11 o'clock. We'll be doing something. We'll be doing something then. So, hope you guys can join me then. Thanks for being here today. As always, take care of yourselves out in the real world and take care of each other. And we'll see you back in Azeroth very soon. Bye for now.